others will make a sound like a baby crying and you'll be like oh my god a baby on top of the mountain let me go there and rescue the baby not knowing that it's a snake it's not a baby you know and you know obviously it will make different types of sound now you ask yourself how does it sense and feel your energy so that it can make a certain sound that will attract you and that will want you to go closer to it? Because they will tell you that mostly if you have goats around, it will make the sound of a goat so that you will think maybe it's one of your goats which is missing and you will go looking for that goat. You know, these are the things that we hear, all right? And obviously, you'll hear about Maja Bela. And mostly, when you go to a cave and you see the Bela, you know, running around, obviously, we have been told even growing up that if you see the Bela running around there, that means Maja Bela is not far from that place. So you need to be extra careful because if you don't want to walk in a different territory or in a territory whereby that snake is there and it's going to be game over. Obviously, you hear about snakes like, you know, Mokopa. You know, Mokopa, I think it's, it's that snake that they said, if it's green, it will be there on top of the tree, waiting for you to pass underneath the tree. And, and it's just, till now, on that mountain, nobody knows how many creatures are on that mountain. We get surprised all the time, all right? So I didn't want to go there and also the energy when you're there and already I've seen what I've seen I'm like I, I don't want to explore this mountain and end up not knowing where I should go because of we had growing up that there is a place on top of that mountain that when you walk past next to that stone you have to greet and if you don't greet you are not going to come back. You know, it's a famous story. They've been saying that, they've been telling us that story and they said, you know, there was the other guy who was greedy and who thought he knows better and he said, but why should we have to pass here and greet? Not know, not even seeing anybody. And that person, they said that day, that person didn't want to greet, that person just passed. They went there, they got what we call the mupu, the fruits there on top of that mountain. And when they were on their way back, they said the guy just got stuck. He couldn't, you know, continue with his um, trip home. So we've been hearing a lot of stories, you know, stories like, you know, the other day it was uh, around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the evening, you know, people went to the mountain to get what we call the Mopudu and the Clare Rock, you know, and they just smell pup and fish, but they didn't see who was cooking that. And they had a voice of a woman saying, you are making noise. It's at night, we are sleeping. And they were so afraid because they looked around and they didn't see anybody. And that's the reason why people are saying that mountain is the mountain of our ancestors. The famous story is the story of, you know, um, the civil engineers who wanted to drill the mountain because of we are rounding from our village to uh, the town called Senova Rana, formerly known as Bokhom. I think we are paying, last time I checked it was 38 rand or 39 rand. I think now we are paying over 40 bucks just to go to a place which is only divided by the mountain. And they try to drill the mountain so that they can make a road there. But unfortunately, as we hear the story they were saying, every time they drill the mountain, the following morning when they come back, they find out that the mountain is so is sealed like Nothing happened there and they find all their tools, you know, uh, placed safely like somebody just took all the tools and put them, you know, somewhere a bit far from the mountain to show them that we don't want anything to do with your noises, you guys hooting, you guys, you know, playing loud music at this mountain. We want our silence. We want peace on this mountain. So these are the type of stories that we used to hear. And I can also confirm, when I was young, I remember, we used to see fire on top of that mountain. And 
we used to be so scared because of we thought that fire now will go down the mountain and our houses will be bad, you know, back in the days. And the elders used to tell us that we shouldn't be afraid because of that fire is up there because of the police decided to burn, you know, the bushes on top of, you know, that mountain because of there was a, a rumor that there were a certain group of people who used to, you know, um, should I even say this? I don't know. Who used to trade with Mary Jane, marijuana, weed? You know, they used to have, you know, farms up there. They used to plant those, you know, um, marijuana. And there were those who used to trade with, uh, you know, different type of stuff because those guys will spend time on top of, you know, the mountain. And there will be others who snitch, you know, who will tell them, the police, that, you know, we know so and so now is, you know, living lavish because of his saving this and that and they are getting that thing from on top of that mountain. So the police will, you know, often to go on top of the mountain looking for weed, but they don't find it. You know, all they see is just, you know, a, an open field. You know, and sometimes they will just decide to ban, hoping that they will destroy that, you know, uh, Mary Jane because of, back in the days it was illegal. So if they know that you are selling that, back in the days you were going to jail. It was a jail time for you. So there were, you know how people are jealous. So those who live on top of that mountain, those who are trading with that Mary Jane, of course they will trade for cash. But if you are bringing things that they need the most, like maybe a bri pack or maybe you bring in, you know, maize meal, they were willing to give you a pack of Mary Jane and take food so that they can cook and eat because of they cannot every day go down to the stores and buy everything because they didn't want too many people to know that they were hiding on top of that mountain and they didn't want people to know that they are doing something which was illegal you know you know planting marijuana and selling marijuana on top of that mountain so we used to see fire and i remember the elders used to tell us that no don't worry you know it's the police you know doing what they're doing you know um on top of that mountain because of you know Mary Jane is illegal. When I say Mary Jane I talk about so I talk about weed. And it was those days and even if you can take a look at that mountain, they they, they didn't even put the area there. You know, you know when you look at other mountains they have these towers which helps with network. There is no tower on top of that mountain because they said they tried but they couldn't succeed. Mountain of my Waho, the mountain of my forefathers, the mountain of my ancestors. So much has been said, but not about you. Allow me to tell your story. So there was a painful story about the other gentleman who went to that mountain to pray. And he decided to do steam, steaming, what we call caramelo. You know how we do caramelo as black people? It's, it's an old thing, you know, it's an indigenous method of, of healing. You know, steaming, it helps with flu, it helps with skin, it helps with, you know, sinus, it helps with coughing, it helps with you know, removing the dark cloud. It helps with, you know, um, bringing back your luck. Depending on what you use, when you use that water and different type of stones that you're going to use, right? I made a video talking about it, but I think I should also go deep into it because of sometimes people are told that they should go and steam using you know, stones maybe from the mountain and stones from the river, but when they get to the river, they see stones lying down there or they just see stones visible and they take those stones using them, not knowing that those stones has been used before. Because mostly when you find the stones there, those stones mostly have been used before. So please pay attention because different people use different methods when they're doing steaming. Others are using the transformer 
things that I cannot even mention. You know, others are using all these herbs and matugula and all these other mixtures which can actually make you dizzy when you're inhaling those things. They use those things and they put them into the water and they, when the stones are boiling, they are inhaling those type of stuff. So people use different types of stuff that I don't want to mention and, and give away all the type of stuff that people use when they're doing steaming. So if you are not careful, you're going to get into the river and find stones which are just visible and take that stone without knowing that that stone has been used before. And now, the most dangerous thing about it is that when you are inhaling, you are inhaling a stone which has been used and they've been using different substances or liquid that you have no idea about and you start you know fainting you start losing power you start you know um feeling dizzy and also one thing that i must speak about is that people are lazy or people doesn't have more knowledge when it comes to these type of things when we talk about rivers there are rivers and there are what we just call storage whereby you see water which is flowing there comes from these other companies the others come from these other places from this other school from the the drain system eventually it, it starts what we call a river that's the reason why growing up we used to hear older guys telling us that no 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 where did you get the stone there no no don't use stones from that river because of those stones are not the right stones because of where you got there water which is flowing there is not healthy it's not clean because of there is a place there is a factory or the a factory space or industrial space whereby companies which are dealing with chemicals when these people are washing whatever that they're washing with chemicals you know it goes down the drain system and it ends up going to what you call a river and now that river is polluted and that that water it contains chemicals from a certain company now you just take a stone from that river and you put it in, in inside the water and you're inhaling the chemical which has been flushed down on the drainage system of that chemical company so it becomes deadly so I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about this because of the famous story which happened on on that mountain is that they found a guy dead and this person was steaming so it's either he used the wrong stones or it's either while he's steaming he saw something and he tried to run away and he fell because of the water was boiling then that's how he died from the heat of the water or else there might be the third Thing that caused his death maybe his medical condition was not right we know some other people are dealing with ep epilepsy and some other people are dealing with heart attacks and some other people have you know low sugar diabetes others is high sugar diabetes others is high blood and all this type of stuff right and and that's the reason why when people are told to go and steam it's very much important for a prophet to tell the person how the person should steam should they use the system whereby they put water in, 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 in the boil the, the, the boil water and put stones in the in that water so that it can boil and generate heat? Or they have to put you know stones and take water and pour on top of stones that it can bring you know that heat the way they can control it the way we do in solar. Or maybe their health condition wants them to lower the steam because of they cannot take too much heat so it, it all goes deep into that so so people sometimes tell people that man what i see i see caramel what i see i see steaming
but they don't tell people in details why they should steam so that they can benefit with what and what are the reasons why they should steam and if they don't steam this and this should happen and when they steam they should make sure that the steaming is on this level not on that level you know those type of stuff when you get great prophets they go deep into details but other prophets you know they prophesy you like they don't want to prophesy you they tell you things like they don't want to tell you things they just tell you bro what i see you are see karame and they just leave you like that but some people you cannot blame them because of what they've been shown they're shown things in dreams or they're shown things in in pieces they only see snippets they don't see things in details they will tell you only that part and they leave you in others there are those who says we've been praying and we've been suffering why should we give you everything in details there is no reason we should give you everything in details because we are still suffering we are also help waiting for god to give us you know our blessings we are still waiting for the keys that's why they cannot give you things in details but anyway i wanted to speak about that because of it's either it was his health condition or it's either he used the wrong stones or wrong water or either you know he saw something that he could not face and he tried to run away not knowing that he will trip and fall and that's how he died you know and i cannot speak deep about that story because of the the gentleman was found dead on top of that mountain and you know there's also the famous story of the other cave you know and this cave is the cave that you would normally hear them saying Nibajan, Nibajan. If, if you ever heard people say Nibajan, Nibajan, when they talk about Nibajan, they don't talk about the normal Nibajan, the parasites that we know. Nibajan is, is parasites. It, you know, but they are not actually talking about those. They are referring to, I think it's tigers or leopards, which stays in that cave now this is the most dangerous cave i was once you know on top of that mountain i remember i was alone i saw these other two guys that were camping next to river Masteku. you know they had fire everything was just awesome and i just came from the pastoring to the window and i greeted them and i said guys i am looking for this cave called Ipajani. Those guys, they look at each other, they were two. And you see guys shaking their heads, you know. And once you see people shaking their heads, you know that what you just said is just something that they're not even expecting. And they said, Bra, can we ask you who you are? And I told them who I am. And they were asking that because of it's very rare to see a guy walking alone asking about that cave because many people lost their lives there and when we talk about many people lost their lives there we are not talking about people who are not known you know it's people that when people are telling you they're telling you about people which are known in certain villages and Those guys were like saying, look man, we cannot even point to the direction of that cave. We cannot even tell you anything about that cave. Because we don't want to feel guilty when we hear that someone died or someone was found dead at that cave because of we are going to regret this for the rest of our lives knowing exactly that we are the ones who showed you the cave the cave is dangerous my guy we don't want to lie to you we heard about it we've been praying on this mountain we heard about it but we haven't even been there because of there is tigers before we can even go far there is tigers which stays there and there is times whereby they're just walking around and they are hungry and once they see you it's just lunch time we don't know how you're going to survive them and one thing they told me they said the path it is so small and trees are like this they said 
you won't even see where they will come from. That's why we can't even give you information about that place. You know, in my language, we just say, it's like you just took it in peace. Whatever they told you, you just accept what they're telling you and you're not arguing with them. You're not trying, you know, to press so that they can give you direction, right? I remember that day I went home and I told myself that I will come back one day alone early because of I already covered this side of La Fasteria because I walked all the way until the end and I saw that okay there is another level of the mountain. Next time I'm going to come and explore that, but before that I wanna explore the other side of you know uh, this mountain before I'll go on the other layer, right? Told myself, no, I'll come back again. And I'll look for that cave that they're telling me about, which they are saying is, is, is dangerous. Now, the story about this cave, Ripajane, there was this other gentleman who is a well, was, was a well-known prophet in our village. He is the one who introduced what they call Motwa, what they call Kalabakis, what they call Taiwan. Now, Taiwan is a tea which is mixed with spirit. I'm not going to go deep into details. So he was a well-known prophet. He helped a lot of people who were struggling with unemployment because of they came to him. He told them what they should do so that they can get jobs. And many of them, they got jobs in Venetia Mine. Venetia Mine is one of the well-known mines, you know, even in Bobo. You can just check it online and you will find it there. Others that are saying the BS, Venetia Mine. So many people from the surrounding villages, you know, they're working in Venetia Mine. There's a bus that takes them in the early in the morning and it will bring them later. And the other people, they have places where they decided to rent, you know, next to the mine so that they can stay there and they come, you know, to the villages maybe after a week or maybe month end, right? So some of those guys who come month end, when they come home, they always remember him because of he's the guy who helped them to get jobs, right? Others will bring teas, others will bring a lot of stuff to him and they will chill you know, under the tree and they will talk about a lot of stuff and time after time they will tell them that guys, tonight I'm going to Manabobo Mountain, I'm going to spend a the night there, I'm going to pray there and they will go with him. On this particular night, he went there with this group of people. It was just an awesome night because of they trusted him a lot because of they know that he can see. Let me check time. They know that he can see because my, 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 my camera records 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So if it, it, it cuts, I have to record for another 30 minutes. So they know that he can see. They went to a cave, everything is fine. Remember, they're all here. They're all here because of they are drinking that tea. And that tree made them a bit high. I'm saying this because of the day I went with five guys. One of the guys, his older brother, was in this group of this guy who used to teach people how to drink Taiwan. And one of the guys knew about that cave. And when I was with these guys, they were taking me to the cave. And one thing that they asked me to do is to buy them spirit so that they can drink Taiwan, so that they can have a plaque to be in there with me in that cave. But let me tell you the story about this prophet who decided to go with these other guys in the middle of the night. Or not uh, in the middle of the night, they spend the whole night in the cave because they have a habit of, even if they can enter a cave by 7 o'clock in the evening, they will pray until, you know, early in the morning. All right, they will take over, you know, the whole cave and, and be the ones who runs the cave. So, but before they enter the cave, as we hear the story, I was not there, as we hear the story, it's well known in the village. They entered the cave and he said to them, we are going to have three visits. And... In this three visit will be visited by different landlords. 
So they prayed, they kept praying, they kept praying, they kept praying in the cave. And when they got to the cave, he said, everybody must hold their corner. Like if it's five of them, the other one must be in the corner, the other one there, the other one there, the other one there. They have to be scattered in that cave and keep praying. So while they're praying, he said, we have a visitor. The landlord is inside, outside. Keep praying hard because of the landlord can hear our voices. But the landlord will come in. So we need to get our things right because of it's going to be mental moves. It's going to be chaos. It's going to be one of those situations. So they kept praying, they kept praying, they kept praying, they kept praying. And he said, the landlord is in. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. Then, later on, he told them that now the landlord is out. The landlord is gone. We can relax a bit. They relaxed because of the landlord was out. And they said around 12, midnight, when they were in there, in the cave, the second visit arrived. You know, the second landlord arrived with the second visit and he said, guys, things are going to be tough. We are going to be having a visitor. Keep praying hard, stay hard, talk to your God. Guys kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, kept praying, kept praying. Then he said, now we have the landlord, the landlord is outside. Kept praying, the landlord entered, and this landlord, stayed longer than they were expecting. As they were praying, there was one guy who said to them, guys, we have the landlord. We have the presence of the landlord. And I can feel the presence of the landlord on me. They didn't understand what he was saying. He was actually telling them that the snake wrapped itself all over me. I cannot breathe. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should move. I don't know what to do, guys. Pray for me. I'm in serious trouble. I don't know what to do. The landlord was feeling warm and the landlord wrapped this guy. And they kept praying, they kept praying, they kept praying. The snake was still there. They said, after a long, hard prayer, the snake left his body. It went out. These guys are still praying, right? It went out. And this guy said, guys, I'm feeling much better. The situation feels much better. But I have no idea where the thing is. But I can tell you that it's no longer wrapped on my body. Right? Then the prophet told them that the snake is out. Let's keep praying. They kept praying. And in the early hours of the morning, he told them that.